Hey guys, it's me. It's uh, Will Chandler, Handle of Guardian Fury. Sorry, I'm trying to get a rabbit here to feed. Um, there we go. Sorry about that. Um, let me see if I can tilt this so y'all can see him a little bit too. There we go. There. All right. I wanted to talk some about what um, uh, helped help me realize when I was younger that something wasn't right with the Jehovah's Witness uh, religious cult and that I needed to have no part of it. Uh, one of the things, because I'm from Maine, um, and... We went to the, when the headquarters was in Brooklyn, I was growing up, you know, we went and visited the headquarters a couple times. And also, like, I think it was the Stanley Theater. And there were pictures um, and some of the decorations. It just wasn't right. It wasn't, something felt wrong. That gut feeling you get that something's not right here. It's the same feeling that I would get in Iraq, the same feeling that saved my life a couple of times, actually. Just that, like, sixth sense. You can tell something's not right. And so it's that that type of feeling where this isn't, you know... I'm sure y'all know, know what I'm talking about. I'm beating a dead horse here. And so it's... Uh, another thing was with some of the artwork I would see in the books and magazines... Like, one thing that always stuck out to me was that picture of the thief that's stealing jewelry, and it's it's the triangle, you know, the all-seeing eye, the, you know, it's the symbol for Luciferianism, which I didn't know at the time. But that picture, I always, I, from the first second I saw it, I was like, this, like, it didn't make sense. Something wasn't right about it. It's just like the Jehovah's Witness Convention Center in Denmark, where... The whole thing is made to look like the pyramid with the all-seeing eye on it. And that is a cult uh, worship of, of, the, of the devil, basically. And so I didn't realize some of the stuff. And of course, the Masonic roots of the Watchtower go hand in hand with that. And especially when the Stanley Theater, you can see the obvious Masonic ties there. There was also a theater down in Arlington, Texas. I can't remember the name of it when I was a kid. But uh, that same thing, it, it was obviously a prior Masonic call that the witnesses had, had uh, bought and restored. And again, some of the artwork, some of the decoration, it just sat so wrong to me. I couldn't understand why like my mother and other people were... Like, oh, wow, that's so beautiful. And I'm looking at these things, and I'm like, can't y'all see that this is not right? Like, how can you not see and just feel the wrongness of this whole thing? And with that, there you go. That's the indoctrination. And they're told that it's from Jehovah, so they just believe, you know. Now, the main thing that really bothered me was the treatment of worldly people all growing up, you know, um, you know, I wasn't able to have any friends. The only time I had a friend over uh, was, I told you this before, was because we pretended to have a Bible study. You know, we had to do that. And then he would be allowed to stay and play for a little while. And that would think was in like fifth or sixth grade, something like that. Before we, before we moved down to, down to Texas when I was 12. Anyway, so upon being back in Maine, that, that last year I was in Maine... Um, before uh, leaving the cult and moving in with, with my father and, and stepmother, my, my true parents. Um, you all right, buddy? Rabbit's sneezing at me. Um, the way that the worldly people were looked at by others, you know, my eyes were, were just becoming more opened. I had already started having problems with doctrine. I was starting to prove some of the stuff wrong biblically. And my mother was, you know getting me to stay quiet about it like she was worried I was going to talk to the elders about some of the stuff and of course I was naive I just I didn't realize what would happen 
But I am listening to her just taking, you know, don't run ahead of Jehovah and all that BS. Um, there was one one guy in particular. He is, uh, you know, low income. Um, obviously had a rough life. Uh, and I would I end up starting a Bible study with him. And so I'd come by, see him a couple times a week, at least once a week, would study uh, one of the books. And at, at some point after I'd been going there a while, he asked if I could come with him up to Augusta. And he had needed to make a parts trip for one of his cars. And he just, you know, wanted to hang out on the way up there. And... I kind of knew the answer before I even checked with my mother. I got you, I got you, I got you, bud. I got you. I pretty much knew she was going to say no. But I asked anyway because I, I, the discrepancy of how Jesus treated people with... You want, you want milk or you want clover? Huh? Milk, okay. The discrepancy with how Jesus' example of treating worldly people, the people of the world, does not, it was the polar opposite of how Jehovah's Witnesses treat people that are not in their religion, their religious cult. Um, so here, this guy, uh, you know, just wants to, wants to hang out a little bit. Of course, I'm 16 at the time, so I have to, again, I have to ask my mother. If I had been older, I, I, I would have gone, but then again, if I had been older, I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have been a Jehovah's Witness either. So, she says no, and I end up telling him that I can't go, and he's obviously disappointed, this Bible study. And then, somehow, we, in, force, in the course of that conversation... He ends up telling me that I'm his only friend and that, you know, I knew life was, was tough for him and he's expressing this to me, which is a big step for people, right? Especially a lot of guys have a hard time expressing their feelings, especially to other guys. And here this, this guy is telling me this and then I'm like, in the course of it, I felt obligated to tell him how old I was because he was in his 20s, you know, had family, had kids. And here, and I'm like, you know, I'm telling him I'm only 16, you know, like, I, I didn't mean to, you know, I wasn't trying to mislead you about my age and who I am because I ended up having to tell him that my mother says, no, I can't go uh, with him to get his parts for his car to hang out. And, of course, you know, like, what do you mean your mother isn't going to let you, and uh, so that was, <laughs> that was an awkward situation after I told him, well, I'm only 16, you know, anyway, so that sat really wrong with me, because this guy was, was really genuine, really reaching out, and just needed a friend, and the Jehovah's Witness dogma, nope, you can't have a friend, you, you can't treat these people like friends, unless, uh, until they start becoming a Jehovah's Witness, right? So, <clears throat> there's also uh, a number of people I would call on. I, at this point, the last, you know, the last six months in particular that I was in the Jehovah's Witnesses, um, I had a number of people I, I would call on, and I would, one in, couple in particular in the evenings in Winthrop, Maine, uh, I remember... And uh, they were an amazing couple. They were probably in their uh, in their thirties, maybe. Had a beautiful, beautiful marriage. A marriage. It was like you'd see them, and you're like, "I want to be like them." That is that is the relationship I want with my wife. It was like it was awesome, but of course, their views also weren't Jehovah's Witness views. And I would discuss stuff with them, and I ended up having a kind of the guy was intuitive. He understood. He helped me. I think he understood what he was doing and understood where I was at. And I credit him and his wife a lot with helping me to look at the world differently and not in the terms of the doomsday cult of Jehovah's Witnesses. So this couple, 
amazing couple, great relationship. And I would a lot of times say, oh, well, I don't want to spook these people. And I would make up some excuse to go to the door by myself a lot of times. And uh, because as a Jehovah's Witness, you're not allowed just to have a conversation with someone. You're not allowed to ask them about certain things. You can't, you can't just be open and honest. And I was having, you know, like I said, I had already been proving some stuff wrong biblically. And I, uh, I was so fortunate to find that couple. I, the next time we go to Maine uh, this summer, I think I, I might uh, stop by the house and the in the off half percent of a chance that they still live in the same place. You know, I could, I can picture the house vividly in my head to this day. Um, and I, it was, they were, it's who I, they, their marriage is what I wanted to have, you know, as, as a young kid thinking about it. An example of a marriage, an example of a partnership that I had never seen inside of the Jehovah's Witnesses. You know, let that sink in. Here it is. We're supposed to be God's chosen people, God's only religion. And I'm seeing the perfect, like an amazing example of a marriage for the first time from a worldly couple. You know, that doesn't add up, right? Oh, hey, buddy. That guy always is jumping around. He's feisty. We call him Peter. Hey, buddy. I got the runt who actually ended up being bigger than the other two that passed. He is finally putting on weight. I was worried about him. I think he's finally starting to put on weight, but I think he's still in a little bit of danger. So hopefully he uh, he makes it. Wild rabbits, man. Hard to keep alive. But uh, anyway, um, so it's uh, a big... A big issue I had was with um, that helped me to just see the falsehood of the Jehovah's Witness uh, dogma was how they treated other people. Um, they claimed to be footstep followers. I've seen a lot of videos where they're like, "We're just like the first century Christians," and they don't go into the synagogues, into the squares, and public places, and proclaim and debate like the apostles used to do. Like, you know, there's that one part where I think it was, I don't remember which one it was. One of them was talking about, they were in one of the theocratic centers in one of the cities, and they had all these gods, right? It's probably Paul. And, uh, you know, they even had a statue to an unknown god, and there he was debating them, throwing out ideas. And this is what, another thing, I thought the exchange of ideas was a great thing. Like that has how I've from my first developing as a teenager and developing reasoning skills, the free exchange of ideas and conversation is I think that's necessary. I think debate is a good thing. Debate doesn't mean that an argument where no one ever changes their mind. A debating, seeing different sides, having an open mind to to look at things from a different angle instead of just being closed-minded like a cult. That's that's what that, uh, like that one couple I was talking about in winter that really helped me. Um, I love the conversations with them. I look forward to them. And... Uh, it really helped me to to open my eyes and and see things from more than just inside the little box that I had been stuck in my whole life. <laughs> He's looking at the phone, trying to figure out why I'm on the phone. Anyway, well, I need to. Oh, these guys are getting rambunctious. I need to finish feeding them. So. Uh, sorry, it's been a little while since I posted something. I uh, had some some of my injuries kind of flared up this past week, and so when that happens, I'm kind of down for the count for a bit. But uh, thank you guys for watching, and uh, I'll be uh, posting some more soon. And you know, let me know uh, too. We can discuss uh, some of what you guys. Uh, 
what helped you guys get out. There's also a number of channels I've seen recently of newer people that have are still out in the last few years and some of their reasonings uh, for getting out. There's like a snowboard, some, the name is something snowboard or something like that. And she's uh, making some good videos too about, uh, about leaving and why she left and uh, addressing the some of the BS that exists in the culture. And I agree with her on most, most everything. So, anyway, you guys have a good day.